I'll be there in just a minute. Give me a sec. I'll be. YouTube's not showing me the chat, so I had to open it up in a uh, another tab. I don't I don't know what the fuck I'm doing, so but just making sure the audio is working, right? Y'all can hear me. Sorry about that. I swear. Getting started any second here. Alright. So, hey folks. Welcome to my second ever stream. I'm super excited to be here. I'm super stoked. Uh, so like I mentioned last time, we're going to be working on this, uh, this flash cart. Um, the cart itself does seem to work perfectly fine. Uh, obviously real time clock isn't going to work without that crystal, uh, or without the battery, but everything else on it does seem to work except that I cannot reflash this cart. I don't know precisely why that is. But aside from reflashing it, it does seem to work just well. It usually does work just fine. And uh, I don't know if that's an issue with the PCB or the flash chip. Um, but either way, with how nasty this PCB is, I'm just going to... We're basically just going to build a new one anyway, so fuck it. Um, so, and of course... I forgot to grab my nice new flux, so uh, I knew I was forgetting something. Give me just a second, let me go grab that. But flux. Don't know how good it's going to be, but hopefully it's better than the stuff I've been using. Not that the, there's anything wrong with the stuff I've been using, I just don't like cleaning it up. So this stuff looks super nasty, but I'm sure it'll be fine. Possibly go wrong. Not just do I have new flux, I have brand new PCBs. So I have two different sets of PCBs. I ordered these a little while back. I posted these on my Instagram probably like four months ago at this point. 
I don't know. It's, it's been a while. Um, these are just black flash cart PCBs. There's no markings on them whatsoever. They were supposed to look like this, but the manufacturer thought there was an issue with my file and decided they'd rather just give me this without actually confirming it with me. And that was kind of frustrating, but at the same time, I mean, I, I really like how clean these look. But either way, this is what I was going for since um, Osh Park's After Dark service, these things. This isn't available in the thickness that I need for a game cart. So I decided to try and uh, cheat. And basically what I did was I duplicated the copper layer on the PCB itself and then exported it as the silk screen. But then the uh, PCB fab saw it and went, hey, these two layers are the same thing. This must be a mistake. There's no possible way he would want this. This looks, well, I think it looks pretty cool. But uh, yeah, no, I, I really like those all black PCBs and I will definitely be using them. It was kind of a happy little accident, but I'm not using them today. Um, I just need one of these. And unfortunately, one downside with my method of getting this pattern on the card itself is that there is now no longer any markings on it. So if we take a look at like a normal cart here, you can see, I mean, like, obviously I know what this chip is, but you know, it's labeled U1, M1, U4, but like all the resistors and capacitors and stuff are unlabeled. So I, when I'm building this, I can't just refer to the bill of materials and go, oh, well that part goes here because that's capacitor and that's a resistor. And I'm sure it wouldn't be a problem for someone if they have, you know, the layout memorized and to be frank, it's not really a problem here either because I have somewhere, I already misplaced it, but that's okay because I have another one. I have one of these, just a normal one that I had made through Osh Park with the normal markings and stuff. So I could just cross reference to this one when I'm placing all the components. But what I'm going to do now, got extra projects for the future. Um, okay, so I want to go ahead and transfer over these four components right here. I want to transfer over the MBC3 chip, the memory banking chip. I want to transfer over the uh, power management chip, which also, um, this really doesn't do much when you have FRAM module installed, but without it, the uh, real-time clock will not work. So. We need it for that and then I'm going to transfer over my FRAM module. I'm not going to transfer over my memory module because I don't know if the issue is with this. I am still going to pull it off because I mean I'm going to try reflashing it and if it works then I'll save it for another project but in the meantime I have another um, chip that I've already flashed. It's already verified. It's already working so we'll be good to go to solder this on and if all goes well, I shouldn't even have to flash it once I get it all soldered together. But, oh, quick note on this thing. I did make this cart reader. Um, something like this is not at all required for, for something like this. I use this as a troubleshooting tool. Um, I use this to flash my chips to make sure that the chips themselves are working before I get the board soldered together and then have trouble flashing it. Um, because once I get the board soldered together, if I have trouble flashing it, I don't know if it's because my assembly is just totally whack or if it's because the chip itself is bad or I received a counterfeit or something because these are 27 year old chips that are salvaged and then resold. So you can't really just get new ones. Um, nothing that's compatible anyway. Uh, so yes, I use this as a troubleshooting tool. You can absolutely just assemble one of these without pre-flashing the chip and then just flash it with something like a GBX cart RW that'll work perfectly. Um, but you know, smoke them if you got them type thing. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and use my fancy new PCB vise that I've never used before in my life and have no idea how it works. But 
it should be good. This way it's not going to be dancing around on my desk while I'm hitting it with the hot air. Because guess what? I'm using hot air again. Um, I'm thinking maybe I should prepare this board. Uh, no, I'll just pull everything off. Then I'll go get ready to put stuff on. Uh, so let's set my hot air to nice and hot. Let's try my new flux. Hopefully without making a total mess. That comes out much less easy than I had anticipated. I'm just going to try one for now. And uh, usual spiel, I'm using hot air, so um, my cheap hot air station is on the same circuit as my lighting, which makes my lighting flicker when it's on. So if you're sensitive to that sort of thing, I don't think my camera even picks it up, but you know, rather be safe than sorry, so here goes nothing. I gotta wait for this Jesus thing to heat up though. Yeah, I have um, I have this super old helping hands thing that I'll use on occasion. I just rarely break it out because it's such a hassle to use for most things. Don't get me wrong, it's super helpful to have. I mean, it is called helping hands for a reason, but it's just, it's usually more trouble than it's worth, so I don't usually bother. This flux smells like ramen. Um, <laughs> sorry. It's hardly relevant, but... Okay, so, screw it. I'm liking it. I, mean, I suppose the real test is going to be the cleanup, but for now it'll be fine. Might mod one of my Game Boys in the future. Should I start with Game Boy Color or Game Boy Advance? My friend, do whatever your heart desires. I will say the mods for the Game Boy Advance, if you're looking at backlight kits, are a little bit easier, especially when you consider that there are IPS ready uh, uh, shells. But if you're not using one of those IPS ready shells, it is basically the same thing. All right, I think that's all we need from this. this one in here. And uh, I don't have solder paste or anything so I'm just going to tin all these pads. I suppose that's also a good consideration. What do you actually want to play? If you want to play Game Boy Color and you don't really give a shit about Game Boy Advance, then don't bother starting with a Game Boy Advance. Oh, 
Though I will say, subjectively, the Game Boy Advance is a better console to mod than a Game Boy Color because you can play both Game Boy Advance and Game Boy Color on Game Boy Advance. But you can only play Game Boy Color on a Game Boy Color. Probably gonna have to touch up all these joints by hand anyway, so it's not too big of a deal. I got my new iron cleaner too. Alright. So, fuck it, let's just drown it in more flux. That is nice and sticky and all over my hand now. Because I put this in the dump spot. Damn it, and I just rubbed it into my hands. That's what I'm thinking. God, what are we, 18 minutes into the stream and I'm already all sticky? I swear, this doesn't usually happen to me. I've never tried blue tack with, um with this sort of thing. I'm sure it's fine, but I don't know, it just seems sketchy. That is clearly too much air. Let's turn that down. Cool thing about soldering with hot air is you don't exactly have to center the part. Usually the surface tension will do that for you. Not really having a whole lot of luck here, but I think it's good. I'll have to touch this stuff up later anyway. That's not right at all, is it? In case you're unaware, this is like my third time using my hot air station, so there's clearly a uh, learning curve. And then we're not going to use that one suppose we can solder this down though. And then last, 
but not least, this thing. So, it goes like that more or less. I think that's pretty much it. I'm gonna flux up this MBC3 chip again and we're gonna try it one more time. Because those solder joints all look like garbage compared to everything else. It ain't perfect, but it's good enough. Hmm. Oh my god, the soldering on this thing is terrible. These, uh, all these pins are lifted. I think. Probably. Hot. Well, yeah, he's just using hot air. Of course it's hot. I'm going to use my, as some wonderfully helpful person in the comments has pointed out, comically oversized tip to solder this down. Except that I can't actually see which way is top ways with this thing, so I'm just going to wing it. And I'll uh, check it after I got it soldered down. It's easy enough to fix if it's wrong. You can play Game Boy Color with an easy flash mega on a Game Boy Micro. Technically, yes. You can technically do that. Um, I say technically because the compatibility kind of sucks with Game Boy Color. And it's just not great. Everyone always says, oh yeah, no, it works just fine with Goomba. But what they don't tell you is that it doesn't actually work just fine with Goomba. The one game they tried works fine with Goomba. Alright, I think it is upside down. Yes, it is. These, uh, 
These components are so stupidly small, it's such a pain in the ass. Not because my iron is too big, but because I just can't see the goddamn markings on them. There we go. I think this is also definitely the wrong one. Yeah, fuck it. That is the wrong one. I don't know what I'm, why I'm trying to fuck around with that. If you've ever built one of these flash carts using the instructions on retroreboot.net, which is uh, which is where these come from, who actually made them in the first place, the original part listed was the wrong part. And the fact that my PCB had one of those installed, the wrong part, indicates to me that it was probably one of the first PCBs I built. And so let's uh, let's show you why getting the correct part is important. Because, you know, it's a fraction of the frickin' size. It'll work if you're patient enough, but I also have the correct part, so we'll use that instead. I was wondering why that was being such a pain in the sea next Tuesday to solder. The reason it's so hard to read, my friend, besides the fact that it's uh, tiny, is the fact that these parts are all covered in flux. I had to clean the flux off that little one just to read it. Unless you're talking about something completely different, because you very well might be. I'm not paying that close attention to chat. Oh man, my soldering iron tip, it's it's so it's so oversized. I'm having such a hard time with this. I need to make sure to match my work with uh, or my tip with the work that I've got. Otherwise I'm gonna have a hard time. If you're the person who made that comment, um, yeah I'm butthurt. You know who you are. Pretty sure these are all lifted. That's beautiful. I think I'm gonna go over these two because despite my best efforts, they just still look like garbage. And there's still a whole ton of flux under the chip. I'm sure that's correct, but I've only ever assembled one or two of these at a time regarding stencil and solder paste. I'm not knocking it, just saying.
Like if I were selling these things, which I'm not, I don't sell these, I would totally assemble this with a um, an oven and I'd prep the boards with a stencil and solder paste. Man, it sure is sure is inconvenient to be able to hit all of those pins at the same time with my iron. I need to make sure to match the size of my tip to the work I'm doing. All right, I'm done. I'm sorry. I've been complaining enough about that. HDR, I still haven't even built the one PCB you sent me. There's no fucking way I'm building the other 49. Check this bad boy out. This is for buy red or leaf green. But I'm meaning to get to it. Just been meaning to get to a lot to a lot of things. Nope. Probably has something to do with the fact that I am missing quite a few parts still. Or it has something to do with that pin being making no contact. Could go either way. Nice, happy little solder joints. Screw it, I've gone over everything else at this point. Fairly confident it should still boot, even missing all the resistors and capacitors. Let me get a Game Boy I can restart quicker. I love my new power switch, but that's. I don't like having to wait four seconds to turn it off. I'm just going to go ahead. Could also be the dirty pins. Or I don't think this chip is nice and centered. 
think it's close enough, but... <sighs> Whatever, I'll just keep going. Okay. Bear with me just a second, I'm pulling up the bill of materials here. I know my audio isn't synced up, and there is not a goddamn thing I can do about it because every single time I set the offset, something changes, and then the offset is different. Best I can do is ballpark it, and, you know, that's just kind of the way it is when we're doing live streams. Uh, until I get a better setup, at least. Um, hopefully, at least this time, it's dropping less frames. I don't know. I kind of streaming right now, I can't actually watch the stream, but it is what it is. Um, lost my train of thought. We were doing passives, which I set aside a bag of components full of passives, and oh, there are some in here, okay. I was gonna say, well, I have a crystal. This might be a to-be-continued project, because I don't know where all my components are right now. I thought I already had them. I was mistaken. transfer over the ones from this, but this uses uh, 1206 size components, whereas this uses 0803. Well, that's, that's where this one's destined, the uh, art bin anyway. And now that I just realized I'm saving all these bad PCBs, that's where these ones are going too. just can't actually, there's not a line of sight to the art bin from here. Uh, okay. So conveniently, I have some uh, resistors, rather. Label your parts. Don't be, don't be me. These are probably 0 0.1 microfarad, but I don't know. Capacitors aren't labeled, so that's super cool. These are labeled 1002, which means they are the 1k capacitors, so I need one, or a resistor. I swear I know the difference between a resistor and a capacitor. It also says, oh, that's 10k, duh. Um, I labeled these ones. <laughs> I still only need one, but it goes in a different place, R2. Because it's 1002, not 102. R2, which is right here. You 
These are the wrong size parts. I think they're slightly too big, but they're better than the 1002s, so let's we'll just go for it. This is a 1.41 board with custom silk screen. And here's the board I'm cheating off of. Yes, that is the HDR. Alright, next we got a 1K. This R3 that goes right there. So that's what's going to let our power management chip work. I'm not confident in that solder joint. Oh, there we go. Just double check. Yeah, that's good. All right, now I have these things, which I'm fairly certain are point zero point one microfarad. This snazzy thing. Which is basically an LCR meter. So I should be able to test it. Find out. Alright, I'm gonna stop you right there. T do you prefer TFT or IPS? IPS is TFT, so like that's that question doesn't make any sense. I have 100% no idea how to use this tool, so this might not actually be helpful. And the capacitor's gone. Oh, no, it's not. It's right there. Yeah, close enough. So, there we go. It's, uh, it's recognizing it as 90 nanofarad, which is 
10 nanofarad shy of 0.1 microfarad farad? I don't know. So that's probably it. Uh, so I need one, two, three, four, five of those. And they go C1, C2, and C3. Which are right there, right there, and elsewhere. I hope you're not telling me to get in voice chat because I'm a little bit busy. I mean, just just a little bit. one is C3. C3 is this one. say six and seven which are that's six that's seven So I'm missing the capacitors for the real-time clock chip, or the for the crystal, and well, yeah, just for the crystal. So if this works, real-time clock probably won't work, but everything else should. zero intention of putting a Nintendo DS in a Game Boy Advance shell. Especially Game Boy Advance. I already have one of those. Why would I make another one? I don't know. I, I've got a ton of DS consoles that I could do something with, but I've got no real plans otherwise. So, quick update. This Flux is so much better for cleaning up. 
I am going to be buying some more of this stuff. Or maybe not, because I want to see how long that syringe actually lasts me. It wasn't nearly as much flux as I wanted to buy, but seeing as how I used very little of it so far, I'm thinking it's going to last longer than I might have anticipated. Where's my shell casing? I mean, I haven't gone anywhere, so how, how did I lose it? I don't... No entiendo. What the fuck? Alright, whatever, there's another one right here. I'm sure that's a good sign. The Game Boy's not working. Oh hey, I'm a cart show. That's definitely a good sign. What in the hell is shorted? I think my problem is with this thing. <sighs> Out of time. Again. My friend, you should not be watching my streams at work. You should be working. I mean, don't get me wrong, I appreciate it, but... Gotta have priorities. Totally aim that at my phone. That's uh, what could possibly go wrong. Right. That's probably better. Man, all these alligators.
Look, I'm not going to mess with the audio settings because I'm using literally the same settings as last time, and yet now it's off by 400 milliseconds. Like I said, it just shit changes. Um, and unfortunately, it's going to be like that every time I stream until I get a uh, proper setup. I appreciate the help, though. Nope, same thing. There is a dead short from uh, VCC to ground. So no wonder my Game Boys don't like it. Now I gotta play the find the short game. I could just desolder stuff one by one until I figure it out. Hmm. I might just have to leave this one for another time. Come back and uh, think on it. Unfortunately, this is just what happens with these things sometimes. I can't tell you how many things I built. Check the middle bottom pins. There are two grounds next to one of the VCCs. I'm assuming you mean middle bottom of this chip right here where I'm pointing. It's actually just what I was looking at. Because some of the pins on this chip are a little bit crooked. Might just pull the chip entirely. I mean, I don't see any shorts, but that was my uh, that was the that's where I was looking. Yeah, some of these pins down here are crooked. I'm worried they might be shortened over. But they look like they're data line pins because the middle one should be the uh, maybe a short between 30 and 31. Do you mean on the cart bus or on the chip itself? Because the middle pins look perfect. get a little uh, wonky from this data pin over to the next three or four.
Listen, I suppose that is a very good point. Could just straight up be a problem with one of my caps. Or, motherfucker, that is a solid point because look at that cap right there. Good catch, a, a moxon. Thank you. I'm just about to start pulling chips. That's it. Boom! Nice catch, dude. Good looking out. I wasn't even thinking about that. I was thinking, oh, it didn't work when I soldered it together the first time, but that's because all the data line chips weren't connected. Oh my goodness, yes, thank you. What am I supposed to do here? I wasn't actually reading the text. Oh, the save, yes. I'll be ah. Uh... I mean, I'm just gonna reflash this thing. I, I don't actually intend on using this as a crystal clear card. I already have the. Uh... clear cart. I cannot link you the flux blade braid I used because I don't know what flux braid I used. question is, is it going to hold my save? Probably will, because we've gotten this far. Yay! Alright, so I'm going to leave that for a minute and see if Oh, the clock's not going to tick because I don't have those resistors or capacitors connected. Never mind. I'm not going to leave it for a minute because it's not going to tick. So I still have to go find some extra parts. I don't have either of these capacitors. I do have this resistor, but i got to get the capacitors too, so I'm not too worried about it. Um, I'll just have to leave that for some other time in the future. I'm not going to... I'm not going to do a video to finish this car. I've done plenty of these carts before. Um, I suppose the real question is, does it, can I reflash it now? So, let's try that. 
I need a micro SD card. Though it's kind of an unfair test because I'm using two new parts. I'm not using that original chip. Oh, wait, that's not what I want. ROM type not found. I don't think that's recognized properly. That looks better. Let's try flashing. Oh, let's do my... totally legitimate testing ROM. It's small, it'll flash quick. Verified OK. So now, pop it in. You should have. Da, 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 and it works. And then when as soon as I get, as soon as I get the um, the rest of this assembled, I can actually test the clock, make sure it's clocking properly. So there we go, that's one way to fix it. I guess I can solder on the battery connector right now. I do actually have a few of those handy. Literally just two, but whatever. My friend, this iron is perfect for lots of things. This is this is my favorite tip, to be honest. I use a lot of tips. Most irons come with a tip that looks like this thing. It's garbage. It's like jack of all trades, master of none. I hate these conical bullshit tips. They're they work. Yes, if you're attaching two wires to two wires, they're garbage. These ones, I've literally never used. You can tell because it's not discolored like the rest of my tips are. I'm looking forward to using it. I'm sure it'll be good. It'll be better than this one because 
at least you can hold it at an angle and get more surface area on something you're soldering. These ones are pretty nice. Um, again, you get that, that surface area, but this curved tip should be better than the wedge. And then there's these things. Um, these are actually really nice for big components and for drag soldering, but I'm still liking the uh, blade better than all three of these at least. I haven't tried this one. I'll try it eventually. I have one, I just haven't... I can't swap it out now, it's... iron's too hot. And for those wondering, here's the gold from last week. Still booting. Hot swap. That is literally hot swap, and my fingers couldn't take it. Still holding time. It's spot on. Still holding my save. So, I think we're good, we're good to call it success on this, chi uh, on this thing. Uh, one more thing I actually need to do on both of these chips that I'm going to do off camera, off stream, because it's just super uninteresting and it does take actually a little while. Um, I'm going to write a full 2 megabyte ROM to this thing and then dump it, dump the ROM again immediately after writing, and then compare the checksums, make sure that the file that I dumped and the file that I flashed are the exact same thing. Uh, and then I'm going to do the same thing for the save chip, and I'm going to do that for both of these, except for this one. I mean, I'm just going to compare it to Pokemon Gold. But I suppose at this point I could do a little bit more cleanup. Make it nice and pretty. And I know someone out there is just sitting in the audience watching the stream going, why don't you use those new brushes you just got? And you know what, my friend? I should use those new brushes. 84 people. That's nuts, man. I mean, that's an, I know it's nothing compared to some streamers, but it's still, I don't know. I didn't think that many people would be interested in watching me flail around with this garbage. And yeah, unfortunately I can't finish it because I just don't have those last two capacitors and resistor, but it is working so far, aside from real-time clock. It's a beauty. In it. And, uh, I don't know, that concludes what I had set aside for this stream, but I've got more stuff if you guys want to stick around. And my, my flux is a little bit drippy. It's kind of frustrating. just actually label this shit. Alright, let me at least make some semblance of an effort to clean up my desk. Hang on. Before I totally switch gears. I don't know. So what do you think? I have a box of consoles that I need to uh, get to a working state. Yeah, my flux is hanging out, and I don't, I don't really know what to do about that because if I take this tip off, the tip is still going to drip. And I know it comes with a cap, but I think I need to devise some more, some other.
Hey, I religiously swipe my desk because there's always like little cat hairs and shit. Or little pieces of plastic from these little tape reel things. Get a clearing pick. <laughs> um, I have one. Just don't use it. All right, I'm gonna be right back. I'm gonna throw all this in the art bin. Lick the cat. I will do no such thing. He is very peacefully sleeping, hence why you don't hear him. I strategically timed my stream for that. So we have choices. I can work on this thing, which it's basically going to be more of literally what I just did. Or I can work on this thing, which is a box of consoles that I just bought and haven't done much with. Choices. So for background, this thing is the first flash cart I ever tried to make. Tried being the operative word. I had no idea what the fuck I was doing. It doesn't work. But I saved it because it was so much goddamn effort that I couldn't bear throwing it out. Um, but it's still got perfectly usable MBC3 and PCBs. I would just be desoldering this, popping on an adapter and soldering on a flash chip. But I'd rather work on the consoles, and you guys would rather work on would rather see me work on the consoles. So fuck it, we're, I'm gonna work on the consoles. Um, I've got. Three Game Boy Pockets, three Game Boy Colors, two original Game Boys, five SPs, and five Game Boy Advance consoles. That is hot glue HDR. Um, I don't really want to work on these, but I don't mind working on these. I do need more of both of these for some upcoming projects, so that's what we'll go with. I do still have plenty of mostly working donors Ugh, excuse me of Game Boy Color and Game Boy Advance or Game Boy Pocket rather from DMG also this DMG it has a smell to it I don't really want to work on that I don't know why it smells, and I don't want to find out. Alright, so I didn't... I did start trying to clean these up because they were... Um, sticky. I didn't, like, properly clean them, but... Good enough. So what we have here is a vintage Game Boy Advance model, circa 2001-ish. And this one is probably the one that works perfectly fine.
Oh, almost. You can see the power switch is uh, especially fucked. And it's not reading my game. But the game could have just been a coincidence. Pick the wrong game to test shoulder buttons. I'm sure they're fine. They rarely go bad on these things. All right, let's clean the power switch. Let me stop stacking stuff on my iFixit toolkit. Not a sponsor, I just really like them. Yeah, if only someone made replacement power switches, that would be that would be super cool. Yes, the audio is out of sync. I totally forgot to hit record, so hopefully um, the VOD is going to be fine. Hopefully. Probably not, but if I was recording this, I could just, you know, fix it and then re-upload it, but I forgot to record. Oh well. Too late. We're only 84 minutes in. So this thing is surprisingly clean compared to some of the rest of the consoles, at least on the outside. Uh, oh. oh, before I even do that, so let's take a look at something. I'm going to switch it on, check the resistance of the switch. Interesting, isn't it? There should be close to zero resistance. Uh, if I just short my probes together, I get about 8 ohms, so just my meter alone is about 8 ohms, or 6.5. But the switch is adding another 12, 14 ohms, which is not good if I press on it. I can get it down to just the meter's resistance. But if I take my finger off, you know, it goes all over the place. So, yeah, obviously it works, but also obviously it's not working well. Let's see if we can't fix that. I've done videos on this before, and I know Burn Dog just put out a video. I think that's his YouTube handle. I don't know. I haven't actually seen the video yet. I'm sorry. I've been busy. You know, I was just thinking about it right now. Um, but I've heard good things, so check it out if you don't want to watch one of my hour-long videos on the subject. There's also a new guide floating around that just says to desolder one side of this thing and then bend it up. Don't fucking do that. Don't. Oh my god. Um, these shieldings, this one is probably fine, but some of them, they, they just fall apart when you bend them, so don't. Don't do that. You're in for such a bad time if you do. So as usual, I like to use the back of a cotton schwab here. 
Where is my spoopal? There it is. I used these cardboard cotton swabs because that's what I bought. And it makes this wonderful noise. But look at all that gunk coming out of there. There we go. It's a lot better. Okay, so if you're just joining me, because I know we have some new people in the stream, I'm not quite looking at the stats, but the number is bigger than it was before, so I'm sure some people dropped in, some people dropped out, so on and so forth. Um, I already fixed the cart. I'm just fucking around with consoles now. I'm going to go ahead and clean up the switch itself now. Um, there's this little V-shaped wiper inside of there. It's probably really difficult to see. I'm going to try wiping it off, just give it a quick once over. But I'm going to hold it in with my blade here because these things can and will fuck off on you. And then I'm just going to give it a little, little bit of a bend. Just in case I accidentally flattened it out when I took it apart. look at that we're almost done now I'm gonna pop this back on um, usually what I do is I'll bend this into like a an M or a W shape I guess with this orientation would be a W shape you can see it's kind of already in that shape I'm not gonna bother with this one um, but usually I do that just because I accidentally bend these sometimes when I'm taking them out I was lucky with this one so I'm not gonna bother The reason I bend them into that shape is because we need to make sure that it goes back down 100% flush. If it's not flush, it's going to work worse than before, if at all. Ooh, that was sloppy of me. Do as I say, not as I do. Um, Take the motherboard out of the shell so you don't do exactly what I just did and slide the iron off and put a scratch in your shell. So this is a good example of what I mean by it needs to be 100% flush. I don't know how well this is coming out on the stream because I know YouTube just kills the bitrate and I'm not, I'm streaming at a significantly reduced quality compared to what I usually do. But you can see, hopefully, that the shielding is um, kind of off kilter. It's angled up a little bit. This will work because it is flush, but it could be better. So I'm going to try and straighten it out. And just like to go back and get the other side again. Just make sure everything's nice and flush. Then bada boom. There we go. Now, check the resistance again. And if all went well, it should be six and a half or something. 
That is not all going well. Let me... Oh god. It went terribly. Oh, I don't think it was switched all the way on. Oh, but now it's doing it again. So, this is one of those switches where this is just kind of how it's going to work. Sometimes you can get them to behave by flipping them on and off a few times, and I think that's what's going on right now. But sometimes they never start behaving properly. Like I'm still getting some intermittent high resistance. And unfortunately, that's just kind of how it is. Again, you can just try flipping it on and off a few times. Um, but the best solution is just replace the switch if you can. Unfortunately, there really aren't very many replacement switches. It's starting to get pretty consistent though, so I think that's... As soon as I say that... Yeah, screw it. Let's try it out. It's probably fine. I'm probably just whining about nothing. And if not, this is far from the worst console in my lot. This is probably the best console, so I don't really want to focus on it anyway. I have no intention of going through all 10 of those consoles, by the way. Not right now, at least. I'm just going to do like three or four. Well, it's working. Yeah, it's still, still not great, but at least it's resetting much less. I reset that time because I switched it off. But yeah, so I'll need to follow up on this one. <sighs> Such is life. Not all of them are fixable. To the parts bin. Oh, hang on. Excuse me for just a second, guys. I think I need to take care of something.
All right, there we go. Next console. We have one particularly well-loved Game Boy Advance SP. Um, it's uh, seen some better days. It's not going to boot up because there's no battery in it, but... Oh look, that exact same problem every other console that I've tested has had so far. And interesting, I have literally never had that happen before. There's no sound in Game Boy Color games. Oh, there it goes. That was weird. <sighs> Come on, guys. This is why we can't have nice things. Later. Oh, it's actually not Friday. Whoops. Whatever. Alright. Let's clean this power switch, too. Yes, the spam is annoying. I concur. And you know what spam gets on my channel? It gets a permanent mute. So, sorry, too bad. Right at this point, might as well be. So this power switch is nice and uh, nice and minty. Let's fix that. Again, highly recommend actually taking it out of the shell, but in this case, I don't give two shits about this shell. Alright, look at that. That's nice and uh, crispy. A little bit of green death in there, too. How do I keep losing my...
the silver SP is actually the, it's the one I had growing up. I got one right when they came out. Before that, I had an Atomic Purple Game Boy Color, and that was it. So the only two Game Boys I ever had, until way later when they fell out of fashion. Oh, that's not true. I also had a great Game Boy Color. But only because I literally found that one at a public pool when no one else was there. And the whole hour I was there, no one came back to claim it, so... Fuck yeah, I was taking it. This thing is super fucked up. So on switches that are as bad as this one is, and uh, you know when they're not cleaning up, I don't know how well you can make that out on the stream, but you can still see there's still quite a few black bits. Sometimes I'll break out the uh, special weapon here and use some, whatever the hell it's called, baking soda. That's what I'm going to do. What do I think about Game Boy Micros? I think the Game Boy Micro is the best Game Boy that Nintendo had ever released. The problem with it is twofold, though. There are two different problems. Um, so, before I get into that, I just dipped the end of my Q-tip, or my cotton swab, in some baking soda. I'm just going to rub it in there. But with Game Boy Micros, the problem is that they literally came out after the Nintendo DS. So it was competing with the Nintendo DS. And it didn't have backwards compatibility with Game Boy Color and Game Boy games. Um, so yeah, for like $20 more, you could get a DS that had literally the same functionality and then some. So, of course, it sold like shit. Um, and then having one now, yeah, it's cool. Oh, yeah, Goomba. I guess it's usable, but it ain't great. It's not a substitute to being able to actually just run the carts. Alright, so that worked much better, as you may or may not be able to see. Again, I only do that on the worst of the worst. Sir. And then we gotta clean it up like normal. Make sure all that's out of there. Because baking soda is a an abrasive. And so. By doing that, I literally wore away at the switch, and I want to make sure that that can't continue to happen at an accelerated rate, at least. But to actually answer that question, what do I think about the Micro? I think it is actually a surprisingly comfy console that works very well. I really like it. I think the Game Boy Lite is highly overrated. Uh, but the Game Boy Micro is a fantastic console. And it did not deserve to get treated the way it was. There is, while we're on the subject, because I can ramble about this shit for hours, um, the Game Boy Micro, the silver ones in particular, I haven't noticed this with any of the other colors, but for the silver ones, there is a problem with some of them where the batch of plastic used to make the frame itself that holds the micro together, that gets exceedingly brittle over time. 
And so if you try and just pop the faceplate apart, or actually take the whole console apart, uh, the frame just shatters into pieces, and it's it's not good. There are no replacements for that part whatsoever, aside from just stealing parts from another Game Boy Micro. There have been talks over the years of people saying, oh, I will totally make a model of that for 3D printing. And then they look at the model and go, oh, this is not nearly as simple as I thought it would be. And you have no model. I know that it is beyond my skill at the moment. It is a project I am interested in working on at some point, but I just do not have the time or desire to work on it at the moment. Mostly the latter, because I can make time. God, look at that. That's gross. This thing needs a real good cleaning, but I'm not going to clean it right now. Where's the power switch? Thing's gross. Yeah, and you need a really good printer. Um, I was actually going to try getting into resin casting to try making some. Like, I, I started looking into the materials and I started picking up some materials to do it. The problem, however, is that resin casts are not 100% dimensionally accurate, and I worry that the tolerances on such a part need to be spot on or it's not going to work properly, and it's such a complicated part that, you know, if any one of the tolerances are off in any one of a million places, it's not going to fit at all. And Sure, I guess it could be modified, but it's just, I don't think that's feasible. I think it could work. I'm fairly confident I do not have the skill to make it work. I lost the screw. That's okay. Never mind, I found it. But yeah, I I think it could work with the right materials and with a damn good mold. I don't think I'm the person to make that work though, unfortunately. And look at that. Power light is not flickering at all. So this Game Boy went much better than the Game Boy Advance. And my sound is much louder now. Then again, this is a different game. It's not a fair judge. All the buttons seem to work. So yeah, cool. This one is good to go for the donor bin. Hey, Phileo Java. What's up? Buddy. Shaz Khan, I have a GBA that won't boot into games most of the time. I get the Nintendo logo and then a blank screen. Have you tried another Game Boy? Or have you tried other... Like, walk me through the troubleshooting here. Um because usually that's an issue with the game itself. So, do other games work? How many games have you tried? What's going on? Um, that's done. Oh, I should totally mark this. Otherwise it's gonna go back in the pile. The troubleshooting. Yeah, the micro LCDs are fucking garbage. Um, but there's kind of no real way of getting around that. They're just low-quality LCDs. <sighs> oh, 
Let's do another Game Boy Advance. Let's do this one. This one obviously has problems, but... Quite frankly, most of what I do at this point is IPS swaps, so that is 100% irrelevant for this thing. So it's not switching on with the power switch, but if I switch it on and spin the batteries, well, it did boot that one time, I swear. Y'all heard it. Maybe it's both. All right, so I'm still gonna assume it's the power switch because it's always the fucking power switch. What the screen's fine, it just had a little love tap. But yeah, if someone more talented than I ends up making a Game Boy Micro frame, I'm willing to bet those things can be printed by, um, what's the name of that place? I got my Game Boy Light battery cover from them. Shapeways. Shapeways has some really top-notch printers. What state do I live in? State of denial. Yeah, I mean, obviously this one's getting an IPS swap at some point. Or I could just swap in any of the other fucking two dozen Game Boy Advance screens that I have that work perfectly fine. Yeah, this is. I don't normally buy lots from Japan, but that's what this was. I usually just buy individual consoles, but the price of individual consoles has gone up so much recently that the only way to get a decent deal was to buy 20 of them at a time. This is a 30 pin, too. So I don't know if this is just coincidence or something, I don't know, but I've noticed the 32-pin Game Boy Advance consoles don't tend to clean up as nice as the 40-pin Game Boy Advance consoles. Place the screen. I'm not that much of a monster. I can't properly test it anyway. I'll be right back. <sighs> Literally right on the top of my pile. Believe it or not, I have never once owned a Game Gear. I did want to get one of those Game Gear Micros. Yeah, those things look pretty cool. I was hoping they would get a release in the US so I wouldn't have to bother importing one. Like an official release. I do have uh, a lead on someone who is going to be importing them. Don't know if that's going to... Don't know if they're going to follow through with that, though. If they get one, I will most definitely be purchasing one. Or if they import them, rather.
Yeah, those Game Boy or Game Gear micros, Jesus. Um, they're like half the size of a Game Boy Micro, and a Game Boy Micro is already ridiculously small. Like for context, here's a Switch Joy-Con, here's a Game Boy Micro. They're the exact same height, the Game Boy Micro is a little bit taller. And the buttons are actually spread out and bigger compared to the Joy-Con, but the Micro is like half the size, the Game Gear Micro, rather. I know they can be hacked, I know people have already hacked them. I am curious about what other, if, if other games can run on it, and if other games can run on it, what other games? Because I think it would be somewhat amusing to play Game Boy Advance games on it, even though you're missing at least three buttons. All right, I get it. I know, I know people genuinely have problems with Joy-Con drifts, but I will say that my Switch is a release model, and even though I've swapped out the casing on it, it's still using the original joystick hardware. Zero issues. I will also concede that I don't play it nearly as much as some people. It is unfortunate that they are so prone to issues, but unfortunately that's just what happens with small mechanical pieces with such high precision. Oh, don't you love this noise? Yeah, see, but that doesn't, Miastic, that doesn't fix the drift. That's just a temporary measure. It'll probably work for like a month, and then you'll have to do it again. Same thing with people who try to clean these power switches by just dripping isopropyl alcohol in here. Yeah, it'll work, but it's not going to stick. Like, you're just going to have problems again like a month down the line, and it's just going to be worse. The only fix is to replace the switch. What I'm doing is not a fix. This is just going to make it work for another five years or so. Did the exact same thing again. And now it's really crooked. Alright, whatever, I'll fix that later.
There we go. That looks good. Fun fact, that resistor next to the switch is 100% optional as long as you don't try and turn your Game Boy back on after you turn it off. Like, I mean, obviously you're going to want to turn it back on eventually, but I mean, like you just, if you try and turn it right back on within a few seconds, it won't boot without that resistor. But if you wait for, I don't know, like four or five seconds, it seems to work just fine. All that resistor does is drain the capacitors when the console is switched off. Do no, don't use high grit sandpaper on that. No, sandpaper belongs nowhere near these things. There is not a single thing on a Game Boy that can be fixed or improved with sandpaper unless you are painting something. Especially don't put it anywhere near your power switch. Hey, look at that. Still getting a little bit of flicker when I wiggle the switch, but like I said, I don't know what it is. It's just these 32 pin consoles don't, uh, I can never get their power switches just right. And this screen that I put in is freaking garbage, man. Yeah, can't see it. But. I mean, I guess it's better than what it was. It's good enough that I'm gonna call it good though. Just kidding. What the hell would you do with a Mako Discord? What the hell did I do with my battery? Oh, it's under my games. This one has a bad screen and no volume. It's also not booting. Oh my god. You used a sanding block on a Pac Man cart that had corroded contacts? That is not the proper way to fix that, my friend. This thing keeps freezing, and there's no sound. 
Don't turn it on. Take it apart. Let's see what's going on. The single only time you should ever sand contacts with sandpaper is if you have literally no other option. Like if, if that's what you need to do to get it to work, all right, fine. But that is not the proper way to fix that. Well, good news, I don't see any water damage. I don't know why it's freezing though. Alright, so on the Game Boy Micro thing, I have tested this. It's partially, yep. That's what I thought. There's water damage. So the Game Boy Color processor does physically exist and it is physically there and you can get the Game Boy Micro to boot in Game Boy Color mode. It is a thing. Um, I can do it right now even. There's some homebrew out there that when you boot it, it'll crash the Game Boy Micro into, uh, get, like it'll load to this white screen, and then you hit a button and it'll crash it to Game Boy Color mode. And this is as far as you can get. The CPU is not interfacing with the cart bus whatsoever. So it's partially there. If someone can figure out why the CPU is not interfacing with the cart bus, then perhaps it can be patched. But, uh, unfortunately, that's just beyond my expertise. Oh my god. I think that's literally just surface gunk and not actual corrosion. That came right off. And it didn't take any of the traces with it. And this thing looks super clean otherwise. All right, well, let's clean the power switch. Go. Oh no! Right, sorry, give me one sec. Let me catch up on chat. Excellent, close the tab. Hey, speak for yourself, Hazi. I'm not surface gunk. I'm wet ass surface gunk. See, the thing is, when you're sanding, you're putting all these little micro abrasions into the material, which is great if you're trying to paint it. But it means the contact area that the electrical contact area that the system is trying to use is now that much smaller because it's relying upon all the peaks from all the valleys that you just made. Now, I know a, uh, 
I know I literally just did one of these switches and I used um, baking soda on the switch and that is an abrasive. That is basically the same thing as sandpaper, but it's it's much more gentle. It's much more of a polish than just, you know, fucking whipping out 600 grit and going to town. Which, by the way, I hope you're using at least 600 grit if you're still gonna sand. It's like the bare minimum for something like that. Okay. Let's get a new one. All right, guys. I feel like I just had this conversation an hour ago. Goomba does work to emulate Game Boy games on a Game Boy Advance console like a Game Boy Micro. It does not work well. There are a lot of games that don't work and a lot of games that have stutter and slowdown. It's not the same thing. People who recommend it clearly haven't used it for more than 10 minutes on their favorite game. Magic Eraser is abrasive too. I don't recommend those either. The only time you should use sandpaper is when you want to take the surface layer of something off or scratch it up. Or both. See, that's, that's what I'm saying. The compatibility, it's great for some games, but it's just not there. It's not... It's not the same thing as just getting a Game Boy Advance, popping a game in, and just playing. There are only like six games that are actually broken on the Game Boy Advance. More if you count the unlicensed stuff. But still. Not, not bootlegs, just unlicensed stuff like Wisdom Tree. Those don't work on anything but an original Game Boy, I believe. But like the original Road Rash, I think it is. I think that's broken. And there's stuff like Chichai Alien. That doesn't work on a Game Boy Advance. Not because it's broken, but just because there's a feature that it re relies on. The Game Boy Advance doesn't support Kirby's Tilt and Tumble. Command Master. That's just off the top of my head. I'm sure there's more. feels really sloppy. I'm not happy with it at all. But it might be fine, so fuck it. I will, at some point, actually clean this. Um, since this one is a limited edition, I might actually just leave this apart and clean it later. But I do want to put it back together enough for testing. I don't I don't think I'm gonna mod this one. I mean, fuck it. I've modded rarer consoles. This one just isn't clean enough that I actually want to keep 
but it's not in bad enough shape that I feel no remorse for cutting it up. It's actually pretty clean. It does need a new LCD though. There's unfortunately a big old line going down there. Look, here's the thing. The Game Boy Micro is a fantastic console, but it only plays Game Boy Advance games. If you want to play Game Boy Color or original Game Boy games, the Game Boy Advance SP is the second best console. Or, well, I guess the best console if you want to do that. Or I suppose you could just get a Game Boy Micro and a Game Boy Color, since you're getting two consoles anyway. Thoughts on the retro future? That seems like an awful suspicious question there. I've certainly had things to say about Elliot in the past, but I will say he has grown significantly as both a YouTuber and a human being, and I think his channel's great. Yeah, see, it's still not booting. I have no idea what's up with that. I think we'll save this for another another time. Shouldn't be getting stuck there. Best console is clearly the analog pocket. That's that's what it says in my channel bio, man. I'll update the date when they finally announce one. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I don't know what's going on with this, but I'll save it for another video. I don't really want to spend that much time troubleshooting it right now. I mean, I've only been doing this for what, like two hours? I was thinking, I was actually thinking it might be that cartridge mode select switch. I meant to clean it while I was in there, but I forgot. Especially since it does slightly different behavior for both Game Boy Advance and Game Boy Color games. But it's still freezing for both. Let's do... I'm going to do one more console, and then I'm going to call it a night. Game Boy Advance or SP? Take a pick. I'm basically one for one on each, so... Alright, SP is the first thing I saw. I like SPs more anyway, so fuck it, that's what we're doing. Besides, if I didn't do SP, I wouldn't get to show you my cool new milk charm. Screen on this thing is nice and fucked up too. It does work though.
It just needs a power switch. Clean. Oh man, what a shocker. I would have never guessed that the power switch would need cleaning. about to come off on its own. I'll leave it there for now though. Where's my toothbrush? There it is. I'm just getting all the dust and shit out of this thing. These Ports have seen way better days. That is gnarly looking. I'm actually going to pop the motherboard out real quick, make sure there's no water damage. What is my favorite non-Game Boy game currently? I will say, as of a couple weeks ago, I was playing the shit out of control. That is a fantastic game. I stopped playing it just because I haven't really been able to sit down for a while. Maybe I'll play it tonight. I didn't stop playing it because I beat it or because I got bored. I just... You know how it is. You want to be able to sit down and enjoy it. Not just play it for half an hour at a time and move on. Uh, I didn't have to pull this out because there is nothing but dust and decos. I've also been playing the shit out of Halo. Specifically Halo 2 and 3. I just played through the campaign of both of them last week. Which is surprising, I usually don't have the time for that sort of shit. Say what you will about Halo 4, but I'm excited for that to come out to Master Chief Collection. Total game changer playing on PC. Also, I actually like that game, so, yeah. There is no Game Boy Light replacement power switch. It is a custom part that Nintendo had made. There are alternatives, as long as you don't mind losing functionality or just modding the piss out of the console. Such as that video I just did on that other power switch, that momentary power switch. But, yeah, sorry, that's it. Just another reason not to buy a Game Boy Light. They are garbage consoles. And I own three of them. Because I didn't learn the first time. Or the second. Or the third. Well, maybe I learned the third time. Oh, sorry, I think I'm working completely out of frame. Oops. Oh, well. I bent that one a little by accident. 
That's okay. All right, in all fairness to the Game Boy Light, they use electroluminescent panels for backlights, and EL panels are subject to degradation. So they very well could have been significantly brighter 20 years ago when they were new. I've never experienced one back then, though, so I, I can't say for certain. But... Granted, significantly brighter could still mean abysmally dim, just not as dim. Yeah, dude, that's a that's a custom part, unfortunately. Nintendo did that a lot. These power switches that I'm working on right now, these are custom parts as well. There are more custom parts in this thing than there are off-the-shelf parts. The only non-custom parts are stuff like these resistors and capacitors. Everything else with, um, well, these, uh, like, transistors and diodes and stuff are probably standard as well. But, like, this, um, having a brain fart basically a transformer. This is full custom. If this breaks, you can't get another one except from another Game Boy. Um, all these ICs are custom. Not that thing. I don't actually know what that is offhand. Uh, yeah, it's, it's the way it is. I mean, you can grumble and groan all you want, but Nintendo did make literally millions of these things, so it was cost-effective to make custom parts with the specs that they needed. And addendum to that grumble and groan thing, the only custom parts that they made that ever really tend to go bad are these power switches. So I think they knocked it out of the fucking park. Otherwise. Uh, I lost the screw. It's not stuck to my screwdriver. Might be in here. Nope. I don't know where that screw went. Oh well. I'll just be missing a screw and then I'll forget about it and then I'll tear this apart for a future video and I'll have to pound on my desk and start screaming, someone's been in here. And then I'll remember, oh yeah, I've been in here. No, I'm kidding. I don't think I'll forget I've been in here because I fully intend to put a label on this this time. Yeah, like if you've ever had... Sorry, I'm catching up on chat. If you've ever had, um, like, one of those... Fuck, what are they called? Um, Casio... Casio watches with the electroluminescent backlight. It's the exact same thing. Um, so, you know, go grab a new one. See how bright that is? That was That's probably how bright the Game Boy Light was when it came out at the factory. But unfortunately, that's just the nature of the technology. Electroluminescent materials just degrade over time. Holy fuck, the screen's so bad. Let me kill my lights and show you how exceptionally bad this one is.
Like, look at that. You can, you can see it. God, it looks so much better on camera than it does in person. I kind of want to go grab a SP that's not totally fucked up, just for comparison. I don't actually have to go far, I have a whole stack of It's not actually a really good comparison because it looks so much better on camera than it does in person. Well, you'll just have to take my word for it, so never mind. Just disregard that whole rant. There, you can see that, like, splotch in the middle. And down in the lower left, all that dirt. But the power switch isn't, or the power light isn't flickering. It's not resetting unless I accidentally switch it off. Perfect. Alright, you know what? It's 7.30. I can do half an hour more. But I'm definitely going at 8. I don't want to be here all night. I do got to clean these eventually, but... We'll do Sonic Advance Game Boy. Sonic Battle High Speed. Nice. Off to a great start. There it goes. Oh, that's all we get. Okay. I mean, y'all joke, but there's 73 people watching this stream right now, so it's not like y'all have anything better to do. What are you going to do? Go out and see a movie? Why go see a movie when you can just watch a movie right here? There's crazy plot twists and uh... <laughs> and occasionally there's some new characters like we got Jirachi right now. Hey, y'all joke, but it, my video's got nothing on marathoning the extended editions of Lord of the Rings. Which, so I hear some people do regularly. Not that there's anything wrong with that either. Fuck it, I'm not even going to test it. It's always the power switch. And even if it's not the power switch, it's always the power switch.
Man, that one would not come off. Alright, so this switch, I totally, or this shielding, I totally bent the edges of. I'm trying to rip it off. Alright. Oh, yeah, it was definitely the power switch. That's, uh. It's a beauty! Wow, that looks terrible with that rolling shutter. Never mind. Disregard. That's not wet. This one's especially nasty. Ooh, boy. Those fighting words. It's true, though. Nah, not baking powder, baking soda worthy. Just need a little bit extra elbow grease. The baking soda ones are ones that you clean and you can't get all the black streaks out. This one cleaned up kind of nice. There's just a lot of gunk in there. Beauty. Doing some editing. What's editing? I've never heard of that.
Just checking the battery terminals for corrosion or something. Making sure they're nice and clean. And boom! There's another one. I can't actually angle this. There we go. See? No color change even though I'm tickling the switch there. No red. It's beautiful. It's a beauty. The screen in this thing is fucking terrible too. Seems to be a common theme. Well, all the buttons seem to work, so good enough. <sighs> Another one done. I guess, in a manner of speaking, yes, the backlight is busted. But, I guess... Busted and non-existent are the same thing. Alright, so I've got four left, but I don't really feel like doing them right now. Because I could knock out two by the time 8 o'clock rolls around, but... Then I'll want to just knock out the last two, and then it will be like 8.30, and it's, it's just going to be an ongoing thing, and I'll be here all night. Um, and believe it or not, I do have very important business to attend to. I have some video games that need playing. Also, my desk is a fucking mess. I just keep shoving stuff off to the side. I don't know. Well, I'll, I'll, just, I'll do more... I'll do more videos, and then I'll probably end up doing another stream next weekend, and so on and so forth. Um, it was fun. I'm glad I got that cart working. Unfortunately, I didn't have all the parts that I thought I did. There were some things set aside that should have been set aside that weren't, and I can unfortunately only blame my business partner for that. Um, my business partner is a bit of a moron, so it's just the way it is. Uh, but, uh, yeah, well, I'll have to leave it at that. Um, thanks for watching, guys. I don't have the stats up in front of me because I accidentally clicked on something and it wasn't showing me all the stats or the chat, so I'm just watching the stream, like, uh, through my other browser. But we still have like 70 people watching right now. That's super cool. But yeah, no, I'm definitely done at this point. I'm just waffling, rambling. Um, yeah, I'll catch y'all next time. Thanks for watching. What the fuck do I end this stream? Never mind, I found it. The goblins were awakened.